Welcome back, Python crew. For no, let me let me roll up the sleeves. Just give me, give me a moment. There we go. That's one sleeve. Welcome back, Python crew, for another episode of Code with Josh. You guessed it, I'm Josh. And in this episode, we're gonna be diving into some of the data structures that Python has to offer. As a Python programmer, you're constantly choosing between which data structure you should use and which one is best for the intended purpose. Well, that's what we're about here, and that's what you're gonna find out in this episode. Before I jump in, if you guys are new here, smash the like button and consider Consider subscribing as I have weekly Python content driven towards helping you learn faster. And if you're looking for a handcrafted Python guide that has everything I'm going to talk about today in one place, check out my free Python guide. It's the first link in the description. All right, let's take a look now at what we will be looking at. Each data type has its own personality, as well as its own strengths and weaknesses. In this episode, I'm only going to be looking at the first two data structures. Now, Python has a lot, but we're going to look at the four built-in data structures over the next two episodes of Code with Josh. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about lists and tuples. Are you ready? I'm ready. Now, lists are like unpredictable adventurers, right? They are mutable and we can add things and do things with them. What do I mean by mutable? Well, I mean we can change the values inside the list. I can add new values, I can update existing values, or I can remove values. We can do that with lists. Let's check out what I'm talking about here. This is the example I've put together for you guys. Remember, a list is mutable. It's a way to store data in different types. And here's an example of a list ages. And you can see I'm using the square brackets. Inside the square brackets, I have a bunch of numbers. These numbers are elements. They're elements in my list. And I've even put down here, right, in Python, Python starts on zero. So technically the number 25 is at position, it's at index zero in my list. I have seven elements, but Python is gonna interpret that as six because we start on zero. If we wanna obtain an item from a list, I take the list name ages, I use the square brackets, and then inside I put the index or position. Right, so if I say age is 3, that results in 18. 0, 1, 2, 3. If I want to get the very last element in any list, I can just say negative 1. And then no matter how long the list is, it's going to go in the list, go to the last element, and get that out. Let's take a look at one example. So here's a well put together example. I like color coordination, that's what I've put in here. So give it a pause, pause the video. I like pausing the videos and read through what's happening. I have a list ages, it has 18, 34, 55, and 23. Then I'm asking for an input and I'm looping. So every time this loop runs, it's gonna add the age collected in input to my list. But it's checking something first. It's checking if my input is already in my list ages. If it is, well, then I'm going to print off, nope, can't do that. It's already there. Otherwise, my input is not in my list. I can use the append list method, and I can add that new age to my list. Right, and so this literally means I want to add this age into my list ages. That's what's happening. When my loop is done running, I'm gonna use the Python sort method. Sort is great. It's a special list method that is going to automatically sort your list. If your list is A to Z, it's gonna sort it from A to Z. Or if it's numbers, it's gonna sort your list from least to greatest. You wanna do this after the loop, not in the loop. It's gonna organize your list for you, making it more efficient and more readable. Pretty cool. So take a look at what's happening here. Everything is working great. 
All right, now that I have your attention back here again, let's talk about tuples before we jump into any code. Now, I've introduced lists, it's time to talk about tuples. Tuples are like a breath of fresh air, <laughs> kind of. We use tuples most of the time when we have fixed collections of data. So anytime you have a value that you do not want to change because a tuple is immutable, meaning we cannot add or remove items from a tuple. A list is mutable, a tuple is immutable. Bing, bing, bing. You see what's happening there? So a tuple could be great for think about coordinates, an X and a Y, or coordinates for a location in the world. Those coordinates are never going to change because if you change the coordinate, you also change the location. Or think about colors, RGB colors, red, green, blue. That consists of three number values. If I change any of those values, it's going to change what the color looks like. I don't want to change it. That's where a tuple comes into play. Let's check out what that looks like. Remember, a tuple, we store immutable data. So I've given you a few examples here on the left. Imagine we have coordinates, right? That could be your X and Y. Your X axis is 45, your Y axis is 50. I'm using those and those won't change. If I change the coordinates, the location's gonna change. So it's completely different. The same applies to colors. RGB. Now, RGB consists of three colors. The maximum is 255. This is going to be the color white. So if I wanted red, I would maximize red, 255. The other two values are zero. If I change that number from 255 and I said something like 200, that's going to be a different shade, a different color of red. You see how it changes the entire value? You can create a tuple in two ways. One, you have the tuple function. Also, list has a function. I just didn't put that in the slide there. And then you could also just use the parentheses and you can hard code that as well. This just creates a tuple with elements. What's unique is a tuple and a list kind of work the same way. Now, there are no methods for tuples, okay? So you cannot append, you cannot remove, okay? But if you want to get a position of an item, an element in a tuple, it works the same way as a list. We use the square brackets. Here you can see red index zero, that results in 255. If we say location index one, that results in 400. Now I'm just basting it off of these two examples here. All right, it's time. Let's jump over into VS Code. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about how to work with lists, and I'll also show you how to unpack a tuple. What's unpacking? No, it's not unpacking your luggage. Just wait, wait. Let's pretend I have a list of names with four names and I want to go through and I want to print off everyone's name with a number next to it. So for example, Bill, one, Tom, two, Jane, three. Well, let's do a few things. First thing, I want to sort my list. So I can take my list and then call the sort method. Now that's going to put the names in alphabetical order. Now I want to go through my list. Remember from a previous episode, how do I go through something in Python? Well, if you remember from my loops episode, episode three, I think, I talked about the for loop. I can say here for every name in all my names, I want to print off every name. Now, this isn't going to do much. It's going to print in order our names. Let's run it. There you go. You can see Bill, Jane, Sarah, Tom, okay? I want a number, so I'm gonna go before here. Let's say num equals one. It's gonna start at one. And the first name, I wanna print the number. Uh, I can just do like a nice little hyphen here just to separate the names and then the name. Every time the loop runs, I can add one. We run it again. That's exactly what I was after. Right, so I'm using a list, I'm, I'm iterating through a list, I'm sorting a list, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's take out another one. Let me delete those, 
Okay, let's make a new list. Let's just say numbers equals a list. I'll use the list function for this one. And I'm gonna say while uh, input, which is gonna be num, is not equal to zero, then I would like to take my list numbers and I would like to append the num. Let's go before here, I'll create num and say, okay, this is gonna be an integer input and I can say enter a number here. All right. Uh, every time my loop runs, I would like to ask for another number. When we're done running, great. I want to create a new list and let's say even numbers. All right. So what can I kind of do with this now? Maybe I want a list of only the even numbers. I'm doing this a long way, but I'm doing it so you can see the logical steps of what you could do and how you can use multiple lists. Let's say, okay, for every number in my list of numbers, if the current number is uh, divisible by two and that is equal to zero, that means that's an even number, then I'm gonna take my new list and I'm gonna append that number. At the end here, I could print off something like, okay, even numbers. Run your code. Here you go, enter a number. I'm gonna enter a bunch of numbers. Let's say one, two, three, 44, 55, 12, 13, 16, 15, 75. Uh, zero, that stops my loop. There you go. Then our output, I've produced two, 44, 12, and 16 because they were the only even numbers I entered. Lists. Think about how you can use those. Experiment, play around with those. Let's take a look at a tuple very quickly. Let's just pretend I have a tuple called person. Okay, this person's values, I mean, they're not gonna change, right? So for example, if I say Josh, I say 26, I say male, right? These are three values that aren't gonna change. Now, in a year from now, yes, I'm gonna be a year older, okay? But that represents me currently, that value's not gonna change. Let's say I wanna unpack, I wanna take these apart so I can use the values in my tuple. This is called unpacking. I wanna unpack them so I can use each element, maybe outside my tuple. To do that, let's unpack it. Let's basically create three variables. Now, what does each element in my tuple represent? Well, Josh is a name, then 26 is an age, and male is a gender. So I basically created three variables. The value is gonna be my tuple person. So now if I come down here and I were to say, okay, print age, okay, print name, these are like variables that I can use now. I'm gonna run it and you can see 26 Josh. That is tuple unpacking and how you can use the values, the elements in a tuple as almost like the value to a variable outside of your tuple. That makes them really powerful. Remember, a list is mutable. I can add or remove things. A tuple is immutable. I'm not gonna add or change the values, the elements in a tuple. Well, that kind of wraps up today's episode. Now, I've only introduced you guys to the two lists and tuple data structures. There are more. There's two more, dictionaries and sets. And that's what you're gonna explore and I'm gonna explore in the next episode of Code with Josh. Guys, as always, if you're new here, smash the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed what we did today. And if this was a bit overwhelming, I have a course on the foundations and the fundamentals of Python. I have three courses. Start off with the basics, learn the data structures, check that out. The link is in the bio, as well as my free handcrafted Python guide. That's the first link in the bio. Just scroll down and take a look. I have these tools specifically for you guys. Can't wait until I see you guys in our next episode. Until next time, thanks for tuning in for this episode of Code with Josh.